Andrew, and I would like to welcome you today as we take a walk in the Word with Elder Milton Andrew. He's going to bring to us a Bible study that will invite us to take another look at what we believe. We are in turbulent times. Many of us are stressed over things that are going on around us, but we just want to encourage you to hold on to your faith and know that this will be okay. We know who's on the throne. There are no surprises for him. But if we continue to advance in our faith, study our word, and see the words of encouragement that's offered there for us, we will be fine. Thank you, and God bless you. And here's Elder Andrew. Bless you, sweetheart. I love the words that you've said. They touched my heart. And once again, we invite you to study with us as we walk through the Bible. We've been studying um, the subject of taking another look at what you believe for the last three weeks. And as I forestated, the Lord has impressed upon me to speak this word out to the listening audience. Many people won't pay heed to what I'm saying, but those who God has foreknew and predestinated they would hear this word and govern themselves accordingly. In times like these, all of us need to take another look at what we believe. We need to be certain that what we are believing, what, how we are conducting ourselves, would be the ticket that we need to get out of here, to leave from earth and go to glory. This coronavirus is not playing, y'all. It's taking folk out left and right. And to be honest, many of us don't even know if we're going to survive this particular uh, crisis that we find ourselves in. It's not like we can fly to Europe or fly to Japan or fly to Mexico and get away with it. It's pandemic. It's all over. Pandemic is all over the world. So Hebrews 9 and 27 tells us that it's appointed once a man to die, and then after death comes the judgment. I've spoken to you guys before to let you know that none of us are going to get out of here alive. If the virus doesn't kill us, we're going to die from something. Dying is not the issue today. It's where are we going after we die? Where do you plan to spend eternity? When we die, the next eyes that we will see will be the eyes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whether we save or not. And he's going to judge us. There's only two places to go, my friends, hell or heaven. We talked about how real hell was, and we also spoke about how real heaven is. None of us are smart enough to miss both places. There is no purgatory. We're going to end up in hell or heaven. This bring my attention back to Matthew the 13th chapter when we began to talk about the wheat and the tare. We see that the servant planted seeds and they brought out wheat. And when they went to sleep, they found other seeds had been planted that brought out tares. And as he questioned the master about the variation of seeds, the master told him that while they were asleep, the enemy came and planted those seeds that brought tares. So he asked the master, say, well, let me go out and separate the wheat from the tare. And the master said, no. He said that by you trying to separate the tare and the wheat, they're so closely together that you might mistakenly pull out the wheat as you try to pull out the tare. He said, no, let them both grow together. And at the end of the harvest, I will send my angels to divide the wheat from the tare. The tare, I'm going to send to hell. The wheat will spend eternity with me. It pictures, uh, it gives a good symbol of what the church looks like today. The world of Christendom, the local churches are filled with wheat and tare. This is why God has impressed upon me. My brothers and my sisters, take another look at what you believe. 
Make sure your ticket is stamped for the right place. For the enemy is a master of deception. So we find in verses number 37, I believe, through 40, that he speaks of that the, 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 the servant, the person that sowed the good seeds with Christ and the, brought the wheat and the wheat are the children of God and the person that sowed the bad seeds which brought the tares was Satan himself. So I, I'm just saying that we got over 33,000 denominations, you all. Everybody believes that they're right. My heart really, you know, my heart really aches to know that we got people sitting in churches that are going to hell through the church because they have been deceived. They have not taken time to study scripture. Everybody's not right. On a one given block, you got three churches and every church is telling you this is the way to go to get to heaven. If you do that, you're saved. If you don't do, how do we know who is or who isn't telling the truth? Here's my suggestion to you. Number one, just prayer. I believe that this grip that the enemy has upon all of these different, we're talking about 2.2 billions of people calling on the name of Jesus. I believe that that grip, that hold, that stronghold that Satan has upon the people of God can be broken by just sincere prayer. When you go to God and you're sincere about finding out about where your soul's destiny would be, if you're sincere, God would hear you, God would answer you, God would send to you the truth of his word. And I believe God is doing that very same thing today. Now, let me, under, let, me, let, let me make something clear to you about that same chapter in Matthew, the 13th, the 13th chapter of Matthew. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, why do you speak to these people in parables? And Jesus said that the mystery of the kingdom is given to you, but is not given to them. Oh, that seemed so unfair. And, and then he began to explain. He said, seeing they will see, if I didn't speak in parables, hearing they would hear, and then I would have to save them. He said, but because of the hardness of their hearts, they didn't really care about the words of Jesus. They cared more about the fishes and the loaves and the miracles. But God is looking for those who are seeking him. For he said, if you seek me, you shall find me when you seek me with your whole heart. You see, the kingdom of heaven, he goes to explain, it's like a man who collects jewels, all of these perfect jewels. And he go and he find a precious jewel, a very unique jewel, and he sells all of his other jewels for that one, to purchase that one. God is saying, look, man, for you to get this truth, you got to really want to know truth. And you got to be serious about this thing. 33,000 denominations. And somebody asked the question, do the tear know that they're tear? No, that's what deception is all about. Didn't he say, enter the straight gate for widest the gate and broadest the way, and many there be that lead it into destruction? And straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and only few there be that leads into eternal life. This is a wonderful trip for a wonderful people. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. So the first thing you got to do it's just prayer, sincere prayer. We don't want to know what our mama said. We don't want to know what the denomination said. We don't want to be mama right. We don't want to be daddy right. We don't want to be Baptist right. We don't want to be apostolic right. We want to be Jesus right. For only the righteousness of God is going to take us from this place to glory. The second thing you got to realize is what 
is transpiring in this book. This is the Bible, y'all. And in the, when the Bible was written in the Bible days, there was only one religion. You got over thousands of them now, Judaism, Buddhism, uh, Islam, Jehovah Witnesses, all thinking that they can reach their utopia without going through Christ. And there was only one church, one denomination. Now, as a former math teacher, I understand this. When you say 33,000 denomination, denomination comes from the root word denominator. And a denominator of a fraction tells you how many equal parts to divide your whole into. So if you had a pie and you said you can eat one fourth of the pie, it's saying that the pie is divided into four equal parts and you can only eat one of those four parts. When you talk about 33,000 denominations, you're talking about one of 33,000. That means the church now is divided into 33,000 different parts. 33,000 ways for us to get to heaven. Look, God is not the author of confusion. So in the church day, when you said you were a believer, you wasn't talking about a denomination. There were no denominations. There was only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. When we look in the book of Acts, everybody agrees that this is the beginning of the church of God. And on the day of Pentecost, when they asked men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter, who was given the keys to the kingdom of heaven, spoke up and says, you have to repent. You have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And he said, then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the gift of the Holy Ghost is the spirit of promise. And it came speaking in other tongues. Now we can fight this. We can, we can argue this. I don't want to argue with you. All I'm telling you to do is, well, all I'm asking you to do is to take another look and to take that look through prayer and to search the scriptures to see that in them you have eternal life. And I'm going to end on this. Remember, there was only one church. The rest of the churches came through way of evil man. I think in Acts the 20th chapter, if I can find that right quick, Acts the 20th chapter, verse number 28. Even while Peter was yet preaching, the apostles were yet preaching, there were divisions starting in Acts 20 and 28. Uh, I'm trying to be time efficient. And uh, I try not to read scripture. I try to have scripture in my heart that I can speak to you and allow you to go study. Those of you who want to know the truth of God. In Acts 20 and verse number 29. For I know this, that after my departing, Peter said, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. You see, there are three places that doctrine comes from. Christ, found in Hebrews 6 and 1, he gives the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Read that. And then man, man comes up like I just read in Acts 20 and 28. He comes up with his own mind, his own desires, that pride that wants him to own the whole company. Like Satan in heaven, second in command as some theologians believe. And it wasn't good enough for him. He wanted to raise his throne above the throne of God. And God kicked him out. The same spirit operates in men today. They don't want to be just a deacon. They don't want to be just an usher. They don't want to be just an assistant pastor. They want to be the pastor. So pastors have to guard off all the time 
all of the time from these men that has the spirit of Satan that want to take over what God has put up to do the work that he has designed for men to do. And the last one. last mind is the mind of Satan himself. For the Bible says, I believe in 2 Timothy 4 and 1, he said, in the last days, men shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I tell you, the church has been infiltrated. The church has been knocked off of the mark of where it's supposed to be. And now you have 33,000 denominations all professing to come out of that one word that the Bible has given us to follow. I tell you all, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is, and is good for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. This scripture that we are talking about is found in the Bible. If you follow the church, you follow the development of the church, there's still only one church, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. I urge you, my brothers and my sisters, as we progress through this threat of the coronavirus, to take time now, you have time, to give God sincere prayer and to study and search scripture and use the scriptures that I give you and test those scriptures, not with man, Test them with God. And I'm telling you, God could speak and God would talk. He would drop it in your spirit, the direction that you should go in. Take another look at what you believe. Next week, we will go into the explanation of what repentance, water baptism, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost would entail. And hopefully somebody is listening. I'm not asking for an offering. I'm asking for you to offer your heart and surrender your will to God as you take another look at what you believe. God bless you. Thank you for listening.